And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of Voices from the Grid. I am White Ranger Michael back in the hosting chair for this group episode where I am joined by the Blue Ranger, Brian Massey. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another episode. I, I, I already welcomed everybody to I know. another episode. But, I, I but wanted to welcome you too. It, it, it's the lack of beard. It's confusing you still. It's okay. Brian. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, we have our Red Ranger, Sasha Kaplan. The one and only, the ever snarky. And um, preface, um, he is ki- currently kind of on the injured reserve list, but he is toughing this out for us. The Black Ranger, Mr. Ben Taylor. It's me, Ben Taylor, who this year will be turning 44. And any math- mathematicians you know will tell you that's a no longer in your prime number. Mm. Uh, I have nothing um, to say in regards to that. I'm sorry, man. There, there's no reaction to that that is appropriate other than, well, sucks to be you, buddy. Um, I'm going to swing this thing real quick. I'm going to save Ben the ability to save this because I was actually with Ben as to why this happened. Um, at time of recording, we are a week removed from being at back-to-back All Elite Wrestling shows where Ben literally yelled his voice out. I have gone a little nuts. Yeah. Um, so Ben's throat is a little uh, harsh. We are actually having the raise hand feature used for Ben for him to chime in, which is a first for voices from the grid. Which So bear uh, with us. Yeah. So in this week's episode, we are doing the changing of the Zords three-parter, where... Things get a little dicey for the Rangers. And a little bit on the good side for Rita and Zed. But with that, Brian, because yes, sir. My, my, my gimmick is dead and I still don't have a gimmick. Tell us about Changing of the Zords, parts one through three. Okay, so this was a three-parter, obviously. Um, doy. Um very interesting three-parter because it kind of marks the beginning of the rangers who already don't have the ninja zords uh they're kind of out of commission uh you know things go from bad to worse for them because you know they lose ninja or they lose kim's power coin um zed pretty much gives them an ultimatum uh you know storms the castle and you know it's just like really storm the castle he was invited into the castle I mean, sure, but like, you know, I mean, even though he was there peacefully, quote unquote, I mean, it's still pretty malicious. Um, We'll talk about that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like even though the main, so the main point of this was to get the Shogun Megazord to the Rangers, but I feel like in them getting that, they lose a lot more in the process and you get to see kind of a dichotomy shift here and like who's got the more power you know the rangers or the villains and it's really interesting there's a lot of back and forth in that regard in this episode right it's like oh zed has the upper hand oh the rangers have the upper hand oh nope it's Zed again Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit yes ben is shaking his head no but there is a little bit of this right we're like the 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 rangers Rangers are confident that he loses the The rangers don't get an out and out win until the until end. There, until there is 10 minutes left in the last episode. Yeah. Mm, fair. They even come across a monster that they beat up but never destroy. Oh, that's right. I didn't actually catch the name of that thing, by the way, but I had. It doesn't seen matter. It. it was the Incisor Raider. Incisor Raider. See? Did I didn't know, how to spell. know that. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> Yes, so, anyway, up? so with that said, let's hop into the questions. Everyone now knows the premise of the three-parter. Um, with Changing of the Zords, we see the Kimberly Cat storyline continue to develop. Cat uh, is able to successfully steal Kim's power coin, and thus Kim starts to become weak as a result. From a storytelling point of view, how effective was the plot of Cat stealing Kim's power coin to set things in motion for the story arc to get where it needs to be that we 
know where it's going to go. Hmm. Ben, we'll start right. with you so you don't have to try to talk over anybody. All right, so I've got a few things to say here. Uh, first of all, biggest question, why is Kim's power coin not in her morpher? That, that is a wonderful question. And I, I want to put on top of this, why are the other Rangers morphers also just kind of sitting in the same bag too? A little they're bit. Or, or I mean, sitting in the in their bags. Like, nor, don't not. they normally have it on their backside? They're no. not because she says oh, I could get Aisha's power coin. But then later in an, a later scene, I've even got a note written down about this, Mike. So cover yourself. Tommy morphs without going to his bag. Then it might just be Aisha. Then why is Aisha's thing in, 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 in her bag as well? It's like you always it's keep a girl it the thing because they're girls. So their stuff is in their bags. Get it? They're girls. Did we forget to mention that they're girls? Anyway, um, this is arguably this is the first three. I don't want to say the first three parter, but because this follows on from a ranger catastrophe, right? This arc is the start of the downhill towards the end of the season. And we all know what's going to happen at the end of the season. The Rangers are going to lose and we go on to Zio. So arguably, even though some quote unquote good comes out of this with the introduction of the Shogun Zords, This is the start from this point on in the rest of the season. I would argue the Rangers are on the back foot. Um, and yeah, it's in, part one is incredibly effective. He, Tommy's little monologue at the end aside, um, is incredibly effective at underlining what a bad position the Rangers are in. And that all starts with taking the power coin, taking fa the Falcon Zord, and kidnapping Ninja. All right. Like Sasha. the writers finally realized that Rita and Zed needed a proper win and decided to really give them one. And we were talking a little bit before the begin before we started recording that we actually all really enjoyed this three parter compared to other three parters where we were just like, why the hell is this three parts? This is stupid. This is the worst plot ever. And here it's relatively well paced from my perspective. Um, the story keeps going across the three parts so well that I didn't even realize that I was on the third part of the story already. And I look back and I was like, wait a minute. Isn't this still part two? How am I at the end of the third episode? Um, and you kind of finally sort of get an emotion. Like you, there's an empathetic feeling towards the Rangers that I haven't really felt a lot this season where you actually feel really bad for the Rangers because they're in a bad spot. Um, to go back to your question though, Mike, the Kimberly Cat storyline, this is sort of the part that leads us into everything else, just like Ben said. But it's interesting here because we're sort of seeing Kat both as a villain and rival, but there's this is where like we see that she has a crush on Tommy. We're seeing that she's sort of trying, she's sort of been like introduced into this group. And then at the end, we see the cracks starting to happen of Rita's hold over Kat. Yeah, so this episode does quite a bit in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Brian? I completely agree with her. Um, you know, there's that little moment where you know, Kat goes in and looks at uh, Kim, who's on the table, and her powers are getting drained. And she's just like, you know, she says something snarky because, you know, ha, 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 evil. But then she's like, I'm actually, wait, she says, like, I'm, I'm really sorry. And then she goes, actually, no, I really am sorry. And it's like, oh, wow, she's still there. Um, and she's, it, it, you can tell that she's trying to fight that. Um, and on top of everything else, with everything else going on, that being like, you know, the through line of the story, I thought was really, really well done. And um, it makes you it makes you care about what's going to happen with her. And um, the 
holy crap this this episode like these episodes were kind of emotional like especially like at the end too where like tommy's like swearing to protect kim and it's like yo hey you helped me out when i was going through all my stuff with the green ranger and uh you know all the stuff i've been through you know it, it's there's a lot going on in these three parts and i agree with sasha it was like i completely forgot that like I was taking notes and I was just sitting there like I was a kid back in the nineties going, wow, this is, this is some good TV. So uh, Ben, you got your hand raised. Two things. One. What's up? It's incredibly. And, and you're going to hear me go into this a lot over the next three seasons about how bad of an actress Catherine Sutherland is. But when she's playing evil, she's actually quite good. <laughs> it's like those natural heels in wrestling, right? The people who are uh, better at playing bad guys than they are at playing good guys. The other thing I wanted to bring up was, sorry, Brian, but the Rangers really didn't do much to help Tommy when he'd lost his powers because he went off to his uncle's cabin for a while. Um and the fact that Tommy vows to protect Kimberly is just vomit inducing in this day and age because apparently a woman can't protect herself. But um, what's more interesting in the whole thing is the fact that the two of you think it was a very well paced episode, where it was an incredibly well paced episode until the resolution where everything happens at once. Like, like off camera we see like in the space of literally like six minutes, Adam has the idea to re reprogram the Zords. Billy does it in about 30 seconds. Once he's actually in the Zord, Tommy is getting beat down by Lord Zed and then suddenly throws Saba at him and is winning. So Lord Zed runs away um, off camera. Alpha has severed, Kim Billy's attachment to her power coin so that she's not in trouble anymore. And it's and that all happens in about three minutes. I honestly didn't mind that though, because to me it felt like yeah, Tommy all of a sudden getting his butt kicked to going going from getting his butt kicked to then succeeding was a little bit, but I don't, I didn't mind the fact that it happened so quickly. I think part of it was probably they realized there was already so much packed into the episode that they had to get to the resolution. And it would have prevented a part four. Right. right. But, 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 but this wasn't about, remember, this isn't one story. This is Kimberly's departure arc. It's 10 episodes. You could have had the whole power separating her from her power coin happen in a later episode. You could have had, um, them only get partial control of the Zords or whatever, right? But everything's just like and they're banging it out like uh, I was nearly going to say something not PG. Um, <laughs> well, I think also for the fact that it's called Changing of the Zords, you kind of had no choice but have them get the Zords at the end of this completely. Right, then but, don't do but, everything but else. That's, but yeah, and that's where I see where you're coming from. It's like, okay, at, it's called changing the Zords. Let them get the Zords, but maybe save the power coin for like an episode yeah. or two later. Could have know, been something that was off. like, it could have been something that was like introduced at the beginning of the next episode. Because yeah. yeah. this isn't a tra- this this isn't your standard episode of Power Rangers where at the end of the episode everything is the same as at the beginning, right? As we will come oh. on to later, at the end of this episode they still have an injury. They still have the Falcon Zord. So not everything is resolved. Just let the Kim thing play out a little longer. Yeah. Um, and speaking of I'm, that, oh, go ahead, Brian. I mean, and uh, Ben, I can, I, while I still think the majority of the episodes were like, like we said, for Royal Pace, I can absolutely agree with you about the resolution. Um, I, I, you know, thinking about it now, you make a great point. I think it'd be interesting if, Kim is not only not able to morph because that that was kind of weird how they just said oh you guys can just give her some of your power but whatever that's fine but uh I think you're right it would have been a little more interesting if not only was she like not part of the group for a while but like she was also kind of 
on the outs, it's like, is she going to make it or not? And think yes, about, she's kind of... Sorry, think about on. this for a second, right? When you get to different shade of pink, mm-hmm. what if what causes Kimberly to fall off of the balance beam is the power coin drain? That's a great point. Like she's been fighting it, but then like... And the way to sever her from the power coin is to transfer it to someone else. Mm-hmm. And they do say that the whole idea of them transferring powers to her is only something that it's like a short term solution. It's not a long term solution. So yeah. then like you could have built up the arc a little bit more and say, OK, they've temporarily recharged you. Yes. Great. But here it's been, you know, however many weeks since and that power is waning. And then like so, yeah, the ending was a little chop, a little rushed, but they Other managed that, to still pack a lot in that six minutes it's a kind of oh yeah like up until like those small resolution moments up until literally up until the moment the rangers get in the zords in the shogun zords everything is brilliant well not everything <laughs> but i mean i mean if i'm being completely honest with you yeah like there was literally that moment where the portal closed and i was just like you know billy starts talking about ten and i was just like oh no <laughs> It, it did it i did kind of get smacked back in the face about oh that's right this is going to happen um so yeah uh i agree i think we can all agree that you know you know, the ending was paced, a little rushed but yeah like decently paced compared to other episodes we've seen where it was just like nothing and then action oh my um, god but with like a little bit of a rushed ending yeah um so while everything is going on with kim Ninjor is also kidnapped by Goldar, along with the Falcon Zord being hijacked by Cat due to her possession of the pink power coin, which also marks the first time an unmorphed person has been able to take over a Zord. Key thing is unmorphed because she can't morph. She doesn't have that ability. Yeah. With Ninjor and the Falcon Zord out of the picture now, how strong does Zed and Rita look at this point compared to how they've been viewed leading up to this point? They finally came up with a decent plan. I mean, look. Go go ahead, Sasha. They, over the course of two and a half season, or two, two solid seasons and a little bit of this season, right? We've seen everything, the most ridiculous and outlandish plan. Some of their plans were decent, but lacked good execution, or they make some kind of stupid mistake. But here, not only is this a solid plan, they get everybody involved in the plan. There's not just a monster wrecking havoc, right? Squat, Babu, and Finster get sent to find the Shogun Zords, right? You have Goldar distracting them. You have Rita and Zed doing Rita and Zed things, but like everybody is doing something. And you know what's great about that too? And and Rito can even just be like, and I helped. Rito did <laughs> help. <laughs> Rito is the best. <laughs> Why not cause a distraction, Ed? All right, go ahead, Ben. I want to call into question the first time an unmorphed person has uh, taken control of a Zord. Because technically at this point, Cat is a monster. She's not a person. She has magic powers. She can teleport. She can morph. She can um, morph into a cat. And in the previous episodes, uh, Range of Catastrophe, she literally turns into a monster. Yeah. You know, I, I can give you that one. I, I can definitely give you that one. A humanoid-like if... person. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Un- unmorphed, we... unmorphed individual. We'll human point, adjacent human adjacent uh bipedal humanoid could we technically classify her as an animorph because like, sure i mean animorph was kind of a thing at the time too i mean it, the books so i can transform into a cat um yeah <laughs> so uh but it's like so- It's a good plan, right? Like they take away the one, so they find new Zords that they can use against the Rangers. Or, well, actually, hold on, that's the original plan. And then they're like, wait a minute, how do we use these Zords? The AAA batteries from Serpentera just won't do, we need pilots. So that's where I was going with this. Why not just use Ninja to power Serpentera? (laughs) Hmm. Um, He is the maker of the power coins. 
Ancient Ninja Magic does not work with AAA batteries. They're not compatible. It's two different systems. Get you can't use a Mac to power an Atari, okay? I mean, you can. <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I don't, like, By God, I'm gonna find it that is way. overall a very good plan. There are certain flaws to it, such as Serpentera and, uh, I don't know, putting the Rangers in Zords, um, which is why it, there's a moment, <laughs> if, you watch, if you watch the episode, <laughs> when Zed is coming up with the plan to put the Rangers in as the pilots, the look on Rita's face is incredulous. She's just like, what are you doing? Because she's like, <laughs> really bad for an audio podcast, but like... She has the look of bewilderment. She has the look of like, okay, who farted in the elevator? Right? Yeah. Like... Oh, it was you. There is something else in i can't remember if it's in that scene or earlier when zed basically is lavishing his like one success at this point and he says something like this job is finally starting to pay off how much of an investment has he made like ugh. now we know from what we're gonna see later sorry to jump forward a little bit but we know that rita and zed aren't the big bads right they're sort of like yeah. Right, there's like, a tier system. A, there, there's a boss that makes them look like chumps, and so that to me felt a little bit like, like that's what my brain first thought of. Like, oh wait, Zed has a boss too. It's all just a great big pyramid scheme. <laughs> no, that's that's next season. The pyramidus scheme. Um, so thank I, you, I Brian. That was the joke. Um, I know. But to go to your question about how strong Rita and Zed look, like they look stronger than they've ever looked before. Um, even when they've destroyed previous Zords or whatever, it's come off as somewhat of a, oh, well, that worked kind of thing. And th this time it's a lot more calculated. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Um, so they, they definitely I don't look know. a lot strong. Sorry, Brian. I, I, I need to actually speak during these things too from time to time. <laughs> Ben's like nodding okay. his head. Yeah, Sasha's going like, nah, he doesn't need to talk anymore. But <laughs> but uh I mean, if you think about it, like individually they've had their moments where they've looked strong, but then it just gets undone by like a series of other events through other episodes. And like this has become like the first point where they've actually gone like, okay, we've got the power coin we got falcons or we got like sitting in a bird cage might i add like zed just has the falcons or just sitting in a bird cage in the in the palace um and then they got ninja or just sitting in this like little tube thing it's like they're going like all right we got the guy who made all the power coins one of them we're, we're sitting in a good spot now we can actually control the game a little bit here and it, it's actually kind of nice to see that especially knowing what we know going down because especially the fact that we record out of order so we've already recorded a lot of stuff later on past this so it, mm -hmm. it's it gives us you know that good idea of like okay this they're trying to build them up for actually something good yeah go ahead brian um so i don't know how far ahead uh I can necessarily jump here, but um what I want to say is go yes, nuts, Lord buddy. Zed, go nuts. Shoot for Fantastic. the moon. You can do it. Absolutely. Bang zoom to the moon. Um, so um Lord, I think uh for the majority of these episodes, Zed and Rita look stronger than they've ever looked before. Um, but then there was one moment, like you know, if I'm sitting there, you know, counting ticks going, really good. All right, you got this, buddy. Um, Zed then when he's given their ult the ultimatum to the rangers he says I'll see you at dusk I was just like and eh, you blew it because you just gave them time to plan that was your biggest mistake Zed you gave them time to plan talk it over um, if you had just kind of been like no we're doing this now you would have won but you gave them more than enough time to like talk things over 
give Billy some time to figure some stuff out, even though that was kind of rushed in the episode, but that's just probably because of the writing. Um, giving the Rangers time to plan is, you know, it's not the same as giving Batman time to plan necessarily, but it's pretty close, I would say, because it's like you had them on the rope and then you were just like, I'll, I'll deal with it later. And I don't know. That's just my opinion. I, I think that's like your typical like bad guy ploy. It's like I have an ultimatum. You know, yeah. I, you have this. X Be here in time. one hour. No cops, or I'll start shooting. And then you know the cops show up and because they're hidden undercover and whatnot. Yeah, like it's it's almost like that meme about the the heel wrestlers. It's just like you want a piece of me, all right, but not tonight. It's like ugh, why? <laughs> um, because he needs time to put his game face on. <clears throat> Mm. so with that said with kim's weakened condition due to her broken connection to her power coin zed has an ultimatum as we were just talking about for the rangers yeah. this ma- ma- marking the first time a villain has ever entered the command center in a quote-unquote peaceful manner um from the viewer's standpoint and from a, st- a story standpoint how huge is this moment to you I mean, I can just picture little kids like seeing Zed in the command center, like freaking out. And not just in the command center, on his throne in the command center. Like, oh, like a boss. Like, like he, he's in complete boss mode right now. It does sort of give you a sense of like tonal shift in this episode. And you realize, oh, this like, you know, over the course of this episode, you're sort of like waiting for the Rangers to get the jump and win and then save the day. And so this is sort of like, I feel like seeing Zed in the command center on his throne, it's sort of like, wait, this is not going to be like every other episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brian? Um, I mean, you know, full transparency, I was re-watching it last night just to get more notes and I still had the same feeling where I was like, it was, it was, it felt huge. It felt big. It felt like, um, you know, it, it felt like, because it's been years since I've seen that episode. And like, I, I can guarantee you, like, I felt the same way when I was a kid. Uh, seeing Zed in the command center, that's big. I mean, and, uh, you know, there's some silly moments to kind of try and undercut the tension. Um, and they work, but you know, I it doesn't completely. It, was... it do, the, the humor doesn't completely like defeat the like the, the overall tone. It's sort of trying to lighten it, but they, but you can't really register that because you're still focused on Zed is in the command center. Yeah, it's like you know, it doesn't deflate how big the moment feels to me. Um, it felt felt huge. Um, and yeah, it did feel like a shift in power. And like like Ben said, um, sorry. And like Ben said, um, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, the, the Rangers are on the back foot. So, uh, yeah. Ben, ben, ben what do you think? But, but uh, real, real quick, let me let me tee this one up for you because you actually had to step away briefly for the question. Boss mode Zed chilling on that throne given yeah. ultimatums how big is that moment so what's bigger than zed sitting on the throne which don't get me wrong is a huge deal in the command center what's a bigger deal is how it happens because he reaches out to them and like you're gonna bring me to you <clears throat> he has a power coin he could walk through the door at any point. Yeah. It's like adding insult to injury. And he's just like the complete Chad. And he's like, nah, you're doing all the work here. I'm in control. Boss mode said. Yeah. It's a great moment. Which... Yeah. Oh, it's... Because yeah. like, we, we, we've established that until now, unless you have a power coin or... You're specifically brought in by Zordon or Alpha. You can't get into the command center, right? Which is why Rita had to make the Green Ranger and whatever, right? But Zed has the pink power coin. 
he could just walk through the door at any point. <laughs> yeah. And we'll talk about walking through doors because there is apparently a back door that doesn't require a power coin, but we'll get to that in a later episode. So. Uh... So. Technically, you could argue that they deactivated the system so that Kim could get in because she doesn't have a power coin anymore. Actually, yeah. at that actually at that point later in the season, Kim's gone when this happens. Right, but it doesn't so. mean they put the thing back into place. Yeah, that's true. This is the, these are the power rangers that historically make a device that's really, really important and then never defend it. This is also very true. As we see in this episode <laughs> as well. Uh, <laughs> so while all this is going on. Zed's minions of Finster and Squat Babu have found the dormant ancient Zords. And as part of his ultimatum to save Kim, he wants the Rangers to pilot these Zords. However, Billy has other plans and is able to use the Power Rangers coins to reroute. Hold on a sec. Reroute control of the Zords to the Rangers. What are your thoughts on the new Shogun Zords and their combo Shogun Megazord? Ben has his hand up, so we're going to go to Ben first. Who has other plans? Billy and Adam. No. Just Adam? Just Adam. Adam is the one that says, can't you just reprogram the Zoids? And Billy's like, oh yeah. So I, I'm going to admit this. Um, I didn't use my notes when I wrote the questions. I was on the Wikipedia for that, and they don't have it listed as Adam with the idea. Well, then they're wrong. He is so. the greatest Power Ranger of all time. I'm just saying. We've established this, absolutely. I mean, we have our picture with the man, and we also recently got his new album for Where Giants Fall. Anyway, nice. the point being, I would like you to restate the question properly. Okay. <laughs> However, Adam has other plans and is able to, uh, to have Billy use the Rangers power coins to reroute control of the Zords to the Rangers. What is your thoughts on the new Shogun Zords and their combo Shogun Megazord? Uh, thank you. For... <laughs> You're welcome, good, sir. <laughs> Oh, yeah, quite, quite, quite. I didn't get a hurrah from that guy. But anyways, I will start with you, Sasha, because you haven't gone first in a while. I honestly couldn't give a flying buttress about the Shogun Zords. I'm sorry. They're, uh, I'm new not toys. a fan of the design. I'm not. But new I, toys. Well, I don't care. Look, I've said this on the show a lot. I am very picky about the Zords, number one. Number two, a lot of the early Power Ranger Zords are not that interesting to look at. They're just not. Um, and three, I had a third point in there somewhere. <laughs> they the overall design, like they look okay, but I I they're I think part of it is like they're a very big contrast to like the animal zords that we've seen. And I I like animal zords versus humanoid looking robot zords. Fair. That's right. Ben, ben. Come to me last. I've got a lot to say on this one. All right, Brian. Yeah. Um, so I don't like them as much as the regular Ninja Megazord. Um and I will say um it's kind of interesting because they're pulling footage from uh, in in Cocker Ranger, it's supposed to be like a hidden temple that then turns into a thing, but obviously they're not going to do that in Power Rangers, so some of the ooh and ah is understandably lost, but that's fine. Um, I think it's I think it looks okay. Um, I just think it's later on in the season it's going to be weird where like the right arm uh, turns from white to pink because of you know just behind the scenes stuff. Not a big deal. Uh, it's okay. It's not my favorite sword. Um, yeah, I, I like the Ninja Mega Sword better, personally. Now, obviously, the, the reason for this change was also because of the Sentai of Kaku yes. Ranger, because this also leads up to when we get to the Alien Ranger portion, because it deals more with them, with the Zords, mm -hmm. because they... I think they barely use the Ninja Zord in Kaku mm -hmm. Ranger, if I remember right. And they primarily use the Shogun Sword. Yes. So, Ben. So that's one. Ben, the floor is yours. So I've got 
quite a bit to say on the subject of the Shogun Zords, just from kind of summing up stuff I've said in previous episodes as well. Um, first of all, you got to bring up the fact that they're the first fully humanoid Zords that we've had, right? Um, yes, there's a connection to it that's slightly different um, because of the whole um, uh, alien ranges and how they're going to control the Zords later, right? Um, so you don't specifically think of these as the mighty Morphin Rangers' own Zords. But um, I wanted to talk about how this moment has been being prepared for for an entire season. Um, so in Mighty Morphing Season 1, and again in Dino Thunder for some reason, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are referred to as Earth's first Rangers, right? Even though Zordon and Alpha have been on, well, Alpha's been on Earth since his creation and his previous Alpha 4, who we see in the finale in a box in the basement, was with Zordon even before then. Um, Did Zordon just like call ahead and be like, hey, Alpha 4 started to get a little rusty. Edenoid, can I get a new one? No idea. Uh, <laughs> but in, in those episodes, it was set up that um, the Mighty Morphin Rangers were Earth's first Rangers. But then in season two, you had several episodes that involved previous ranger teams right um uh, most notably of all technically wild west rangers where kim goes back in time and recruits earlier versions of the current rangers to be power rangers who then just give the coins back which is weird but that all set you up for the idea of these ancient zords um because while they are described as the ancient zord zords of zoidaria they aren't very specific that that's another planet and you never see anyone travel to that other planet you just see a bunch of people in a jungle which uh, i always read in my head as a jungle on earth um, and it's very interesting to me how they seeded in over the course of like an entire season these th this idea that there were previous ranger teams so that when we got to this moment and they revealed what they are calling until the end of the episode the ancient zords that you weren't going to go but Mighty Morphing were Earth's first ranger team. It's quite well done, in my opinion. Um, and I quite like the fact that until now, both set of Zords we've had are quite nippy Zords, like the 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 Megazord and the the the, the Ninja Megazord are quite agile. They're quite lithe. They can move quickly. They can dodge things whereas the shogun megazord is just a tank it's big it's a big thick boy that just needs to get hold of people and yeet them into space it's a big old boy is just big old meaty meat and he's like i'm strong boy so, so uh it, it's a, one of those meat slappers yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, long, like, it's just it, like Asha just has like, this look on her face going like what are these guys referring to it's a wrestling <laughs> talk for us no, no 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 even outside that you've just got like the 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 the, the, the original megazord and the ninja megazord are just like average mecha right and then you've got 
the, the ninja, ma- the, the Shogun Maker's Order is just this big, swole hunk of beef that's as wide as it is tall. And it's just, it, it's more of a tank than it is a robot, which if you then look at the Zeo Zords, three of which are actual tanks, <laughs> kind of makes some sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So, last question I have here. Uh, despite the ultimate defeat to the Rangers at the end of the three-episode arc, Rita and Zed still have Ninja, the Falcon Zord, and the Pink Power Coin. Going forward, how much of a threat does this make them look? Um, Brian, go for it. Yeah, sure. Um, I just didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, yeah, it, it absolutely sets them up as like, oh, hey, wow, we're a threat now. And they look really to be in their prime to, you know, take over Earth and, you know, um, keep on listening to the show. They might just do that. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it's crazy how, you know, we've been we've been watching these episodes and like, you know, it, it's nice. OK, here's the thing. It's nice to break up the formula where you know, Rangers hanging out. Zed's like, oh, I don't like that. Send down a monster. They fight the monster. Zed's like, oh, next week. That's completely broken here. I, I really like that. Yeah, wow. Zed and Rita, they've, they have some, uh, they have some stock in the game now. It's like they, they can, act, they can make some moves that are actually going to mean something. And I think they look pretty powerful going into the next episode. Sasha? I mean, given what we see later, because again, we've recorded some of these episodes out of order, um, you do get the sense that there's something bigger being being worked on. And mm-hmm. it seems like this episode really does a good job of hinting at something to come that I don't really think we see, but my brain has been sucked down the realm of research on several like 5,000 different topics. So what the heck do I know at this point? Um, I will say that just looking at these episodes, Rita and Zed look pretty good as villains right now. They have Ninja. They have the pink power coin, which as Ben has said, they can flex and walk in whenever they want to right now. They can just walk in, make themselves a sandwich and leave. (laughs) Exactly. And they have the Falcon Zord, right? Which means they could send three giant monsters right and because they have the falcons or they lost the pink power coin to read and zed the rangers wouldn't be able to fight these like three giant monsters on their own they need a second set of zords or they they need something else besides just the shogun zords forming into one giant tank or whatever yeah. right yeah. so and, and that's one of the big off- things and that was one of the key things with the loss of the pink power coin they it's the loss of the ability to use the Ninja Megazord too. Ben's like pointing at me evilly. I'll let you take that one away, but Sasha, continue, please. No, that's basically my point. Just going off these episodes, Radians that are looking pretty good right now, and the Rangers are pretty, they're wounded, essentially. Um, this is the kid of kid version of wounded, right? Because Kim is drained, so she's not going to be as much help. And their powers will also be slightly weakened because they're siphoning off some of their energy to keep Kim afloat. Ben, ben, you're giving me that evil look when I said the thing about the uh, the Ninja Megazord. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it's something that bothered me with the entire episode, which is this maintenance that losing the Falcon Zord put all of the other Zords out of commission. Like, they couldn't fight on their own. Well, it was also just the fact of losing that pink power coin, too. No, right, but like... That is, no, no. They never say the pink power coin put the Zords out of commission. They say Zed having control of the Falcon Zord puts the Zords out of commission. And also, it doesn't put the Zords out of commission. Puts the Mega Zord out of commission, sure. But your Zords can still fight individually. Thank you. Because that is the one thing I actually really like in Power Rangers, which is when the Zords separately were fighting, as opposed to as a Mega Zord. Because like whoop de doo, all the parts come together to make one bigger, bigger robot. Woohoo! Transformers already did that. Like I don't care. 
um Voltron did that too right so but seeing the end them fight individuals actually really cool and yeah I didn't understand why the loss of the Falcon Sword meant all of the other swords were not being able were not able to be used I mean sure you call disclosure the Falcon Megazord right yeah yeah but big whoop gotta gotta have those Falcon Sword cannons man it's all about those cannons. <laughs> right, but like the Zords themselves, like I guess it depends on if the Zords draw their power collectively, which means they can't function by themselves, which means they're basically useless. But or... we know from later in the episode that the power coins are tied to the specific ranger. So that's not true. So then if that's the case, then the Fal... Then like you're... I, I don't know. It's I, because I get that if word. Tommy isn't involved, it's not allowed to happen. <laughs> oh no! Look, we let's let's not go into the Tommy monologuing thing. Like, I won't let that happen if it's the last thing I do. Okay, Batman. I mean, that's pretty much what he sounded like. It, it was. It, it was weird to hear that kind of monologue coming from a ranger. I was like, oh, what? And this is completely this is weird. unnecessary as well. But I think yeah. it was one of those things where like they just needed to pad out the episode for a hot second. And this is the only thing they could come up with, right? One of the to, there is I have a question for the group collectively. Over the course of the three episodes, it's well established as to why. Zed needs the Falcon Sword and Ninjor. Why is that? Chaos. No. Uh, I believe with Ninjor, it's because of his ability to create. He because he, he is the creator of the power coins. I think like there's. I don't have the full thing in my mind at this second, but I know that has like a key element to that because okay. of what Ninja So the reason done. why they needed the Falcon Zord was to reverse engineer parts to get the ancient Zords up and running. And the reason they need Ninjor is to power the ancient Zords. He's the battery. So at the end of the episode, the Power Rangers have the Zords. Zed has Ninja. Why not just kill him and power down the Zords? Because this That's is a, a really... kids' show. Because because Adam's idea took that away from him. Oh, it took control of the Zords away mm. from him. Yes. Sucks to be Ninja. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and drink my tea. I mean. I, I, I I'm might not pretty sure the writers are like, nah, we can't do that. This is a kid's show. We want Ninja to come back yeah, ready. Right. Face. But my point is at least give us a reason as like, and again, I'm a 44-year-old man watching a show for the first time that is aimed at young kids. Yeah. And early, early teens. And I'm trying to apply some form of <clears throat> some form of plot and story into it that I would expect, right? Just a throwaway line about how they can't get to Ninja in the vessel or whatever, right? But like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So um, if I can interject for just a second, um, because yes, I know Ninja powers them, but I could have sworn that there was a line to, and it's the end of the week. I'm really t- tired, and I might have just uh, misheard this, but I could have sworn also that part of the reason why Cat even went to go steal the coin in the first place was because that too could help power up the Zords, the ancient Zords, because they well, needed a power source. No, but that, then that was Ninja. The reason she stole the power coin was because Rita told her to steal the coin right. because it would. She needed to get it. To, needed it to get into the Falcon Sword. Yeah. Right. And, okay. and and also because it would cause the, uh, it, whatever ranger she stole it from to become weak. And it would cause, it, it would cause a major rift. Yeah. So, but... Also, 
we haven't talked about this yet, but um, can we just talk about cats totally like we'll, not creepy? We'll get to it. Okay. I have a lot of opinions on the subject of cat and Tommy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but to answer my actual answer to your question, I gave right at the beginning of the episode, which is <laughs> this is the moment where for what is it um a good 11 13 episodes the rangers were on the back foot for the rest of the season so yeah zed and rita look really strong yeah sure there's your odd filler episode like the very next episode chase that cab or whatever it's <laughs> That's a great called. episode which is a great like Bulk and Skull episode, which, and hopefully we'll get to talk about them. But uh, it's again something that's where you could have played out the power coin stuff. But yes, there's your odd filler episode, but the Rangers are very much on the back foot for the rest of the season, and even more so once Master Ball shows up and they get glitter armor. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the glitter. So it's bringing up Bulk and Skull. Um, their story is kind of it's there but they're not really as focused on the biggest story for them is is that you know lieutenant stone doesn't believe that bulk and skull are always around when a monster shows up so they do a stakeout and really that's all they do and and then like near the end of the third episode lieutenant stone actually does see one freaks out even though bulk and skull didn't see it yes sasha there is at least one moment, I think it's in the first part, where Bulk and Skull actively run to try to save a bunch of kids that they think are drowning. So unbelievable, Mike. Do not insult Bulk and Skull oh, yeah. in this story part. You're right. Yeah, yeah. At the lake. Bulk I know Bulk I'm right. It's only to be embarrassed. Can, oh, yeah, that's can, right. Can because we, there, was a, there was a note about that. Because if they had jumped into that type of water, they probably would have gotten really hurt because of how shallow it was. Which is the same water that Tommy then later dies head first into. Sorry, Billy foot later dies first. Right. Can we can we talk about real fast, just as an aside, how because I was watching it and again I hadn't seen it in a while, and um it was when they were running and it started getting into slow motion and the music played. I was like, oh my god, this is a Baywatch reference. <laughs> and I was like, when's the last time I ever had a thought about Baywatch? <laughs> Probably it's been when a while. they announced a reboot. Um, Probably. But, um, you know, what I think was really unfair was, like, Lieutenant Stone gives them so much crap about, like, how did you not know that there was all this, like, you know, like, how did you not know it was shallow? And I'm like, D- dude, they were, like, nothing that they did was wrong. They acted heroically. They saw that some kids might have been drowning, and they acted on it. We, What's the problem? Then- Ben has mentioned, I think, from the very beginning that Lieutenant Stone is a jerk. Please, Ben. I mean, obviously. This episode encapsulates everything that is wrong with Lieutenant Stone. I completely agree. Everything. First of all, he lambasts Bulk and Skull for doing their goddamn jobs. Second, he doesn't believe there was a monster, even though there were dozens of witnesses to the Tengas. Third, he takes them on a stakeout to find a monster, just watch the noobs, and then he wakes up and thinks a kite is a dragon. He's an absolute pillock. He's a total plum. Bravo. Yes, exactly. Um, to get away from Lieutenant Stone for a moment, what I like about Bulk and Skull... He goes up to run a goddamn juice bar! Sorry. <laughs> you good? No. <laughs> Go on. I All have right. more. S- yeah, go sip ahead. your tea. Um, then it's okay to be angry. <laughs> I mean, Lieutenant Stone is kind of infuriating, so... But what I really like yeah. about Bulk and Skull in this episode is that they don't we've seen bulk and skull with kids before right 
they ended mm-hmm. up pseudo babysitters and taking care of kid of, of a child. I like the fact that this thread has carried over and that we still maintain that, yeah, Balkan scholar goofballs. Yeah, sometimes they screw up, but they are not afraid to rush to help someone if you know they think somebody's in danger, especially that somebody's a child. And yeah, the kids were very clearly fine. But it doesn't matter. It's the act. It's the choice that they made to say, screw everything. I think they end up pushing a guy into the water as they're running down the pier in a very like cartoonish way. But it was because the kids were the priority. And if that's the case, nothing else matters. Ben. It's also a really interesting moment that is pivotal to Balkan Skull's entire development in this episode which is when they're under suspicion of telling lies about monsters. Because why would you be telling lies about monsters in Angel Grove of all places? Monster Central, right? When Lieutenant Stone wakes up at the end and believes that the kite is a dragon and goes running off, they look at each other and they go, we're going to keep our shields, which means they want to be there. And they're happy about that fact. They're happy about being people who, despite how much they may fail, their intentions are to protect people. And that's huge. Also, the bit where they're at the end going, ah, it's a monster. Ah, It's the funniest they've been in ages. Um, (laughs) And the kids in the back are laughing too. Yeah, and like they're running after the tennis stone, and then they jump over that couple, stop, shake their hands, and carry on running. It's it's the funniest they've been in ages. But <clears throat> Lieutenant Stone's just so bad. He's like, does he realizes what is what the job of a police officer is? I'm not quite sure how he made lieutenant. I mean, maybe there's a reason why he's at the academy training junior police detectives instead of like actually being a detective. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Probably like maybe he got a demotion. <laughs> Nepotism. Yeah, that too. Ugh. I don't know. So with that. Oh, uh, we got two. Then. I got more. Oh, I'm go not done with this episode by a damn sight. All right. Um, first, I need to point out the fact of it being amusing to me that Rocky is the one to throw off the thought waves. <laughs> because <laughs> Rocky no think good. <laughs> Rocky have Rocky no brain for smart making. <laughs> Rocky just wants to have fun. <laughs> that joke is has gotten old. Uh, no thoughts, brain empty. Rocky, have fun. Um, so, can we talk? And Tommy. Yes, please. Can we talk about how utterly creepy she is? Ladies first. Okay, I don't. It's no secret on the show that Ben and I are the anti-Tommy brigade here. Um. And when I was a kid, I did like Kimberly and I did like the fact that she was with Tommy, but as an adult, I don't care. That being said, whether or not Kim and Tommy are together isn't relevant here. Well, it's slightly relevant. The fact that Kat is kind of, is first of all, she's being very creepy this entire time because she's evil, but she's very like, like there's a point towards the end of the episode before the whole thing breaks, and we, she reveals, she's like, don't worry, Kim, I'll be there for Tommy. And I'm like, why is this a plot? Why is, why is this here? Tension. Like. <sighs> she shouldn't be called Catherine, right? <laughs> what this character should be called is Alex Forrest which is a fatal attraction reference from anyone else she's the oh body my. boiler um, 
I was having the same thought. The sheer fact that Sasha doesn't know that. Now I just feel even older. Um, anyway, um, I haven't. I don't think I ever watched Fatal Attraction I, all the way through. So sorry. I, I never watched Fatal Attraction because it was never something I wanted to watch anyway. I hate so. you both. Anyway, um, so there's there's two sides to this, right? I can understand. Catherine being attracted to Tommy, right? And being jealous that he's with Kim. It happens with teenagers all the time. And I can understand her being creepy about it because she's evil, right? But it doesn't get better when she's not, <laughs> right? My thoughts on Catherine and Tommy are going to play out long term over this whole podcast. Because they're going to go forward to as far as Dino Thunder and Ninja Steel. Especially in Dino Thunder. Oh, my boy. Uh, but I didn't really have an issue with the way she was acting in this episode. Because it came across as her being creepily evil rather than like just being a bunny boiler. Um. And as I've said, she's much better actress when she's evil. And I would like to have stayed that way. A good actress, not evil. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. She certainly was more interesting when she was evil. That's what I mean. It's like, uh, yeah, sure. The, don't worry. I'll be there for Tommy. May have been creepy, but it was supposed to be right like it was she, her whole job was to under like at this point we had no idea that she was well we had a hint from all the pink she wears but we when this was first airing we had no idea that she was going on to become the new pink ranger right so all we knew of cat at this point especially since she's only been introduced in the, the previous two episodes was she was there to undermine the rangers in any way possible and one of the things that she could do, no matter how much the writers didn't want to address the fact that Kim and Tommy were in a relationship at, at any other point in the show, except for when it was not, uh, narratively relevant or when he gets a letter. Um, but it just, it, it's another thing that she can do to undermine the rangers you know what i mean at the same time i i don't i get what you're saying but we've already had a character that undermined the rangers sort of from the inside and the outside it that was tommy right so i feel in in some ways it was tommy right because they were friends with tommy first and then he turned out to be evil and then there's that weird dynamic for a hot second but my issue being here is that I just it, it just sort of felt like oh because she's a girl we have to push the romance angle and make her creepy evil like I get it I get her being evil and creeping but the romance part is just like oh it's because she's a girl and it's just like she was perfectly fine being evil without this aspect of it see uh, uh, and again this may be our age gap, it may be our gender difference, it may be whatever, right? But to me, it especially the way that after she morphs from the cat back into being cat and walks out from the bush and goes, hello, Skull. She has this thing where she's almost seductive with every man that could help her in some way or another. Right, because there's that there's the shot in the first is it the first or the second episode of Ranger Catastrophe, where she's morphs from the cat for the first time, and it goes into slow motion, and she's like seductively tossing her hair over her shoulder, and it just feels like it's it's part of like what they programmed into her to be this feline huntress kind of. I don't know. It it just it just read to me as 
because her 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 undermining of the Rangers is very different to Tommy's. Tommy's yeah. was a Tommy was a very direct adversary to the Rangers. She's a mole. She's a spy. She's and I think on that level, I think her and she's not going to latch on to Billy or Adam or uh, Rocky. That's the one I'm thinking of. Because they aren't in relationships that we know of. And the fact that it's two Rangers dating is another way to cause tension among the group. Not only that, but to piggyback off of that, I mean, I don't think it was ever openly discussed on the show, but I wouldn't be surprised if because of the fact that Tommy is the leader of the team that Rita may have given. (laughs) Sorry, what? that Rita may have given Kat specific marching orders to go towards Tommy in a way. Because remember, her introduction was to go capture Tommy in her right. introduction. But if you if so, you look at when she interacts with Tommy in a range of catastrophe with the whole car thing, it doesn't come across like it literally comes across as Catherine going, well, dude's hot. So pretty much. See, I actually think it would have been interesting if she had gone after one of the other rangers. Had they been in open relationships in the show? Yes. And if she had eventually gone after one of the other rangers after she turns good, yes. But it wasn't written that way, yeah. sadly. And, and, and not only that, but like the only other person that you could have maybe have done that to was already off the show at that point, And that would have been Zach because he would be like the ultimate ladies man and he's not there anymore. Okay. I'm sorry. I guys, they literally could have had her real, like you're, you're overcomplicating this. She could have literally romanced anybody. It doesn't, it, it, there's no specific, re- like if her plan is to drive a wedge with the Rangers, yes. From as Ben has pointed out, it makes sense to go with Tommy and Kim because those are the two Rangers yeah. that are, they're two Rangers that are dating. Right. Yeah. But I think it would have been more interesting to see if she had gone out, gone with like maybe Billy, because realistically, one of the biggest things that Billy has that he brings to the team is the fact that he can sometimes use gadgets that he invents to thwart the Rangers. Mm-hmm. So from my perspective, if I'm reading that on this, I'd be like, go get with the nerdy one and distract him so that he doesn't like, you know, there's like a thousand things you could have done. Um, I, I get what you're saying about Kat, Ben. Your description, not going to lie, kind of makes it a little, it sounds a little bit worse. Um, that like, you know, you have this opportunity to have a female bad guy, a female, you know, and she's wasted on being the seductress. Oh, don't get me wrong. I didn't say it was good writing. That's true. That's fair. <laughs> and at no point did I say this was No, good. no, you're right. I I think you've just sort Ow, of don't I make think me laugh. you've highlighted. I'm sorry, but I think you've highlighted what is my issue mm-hmm. with the entire storyline. Oh is the fact I, that she is that seductress. There's her. there is a difference to me about having an issue with it and it making sense. Fair. Right? I'm not saying it isn't problematic. I'm not saying it's well written. I'm not saying it's very well done. What I'm saying is the shorthand that you're going to give to a 13 year old boy is girl wants. Yeah. The, 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 the target audience of the show. Oh, okay. New girl shows up. She's going to want to break up the couple, right? It's easy shorthand. that doesn't require much setup. Right. And as we have discussed, so and as we have discussed, they aren't writing this for people with like long-term storytelling in mind most of the time, right? Fair. No, I get that. Um, I I did. I found it really funny though when um, Kim comes to Cat and she's like, "Want to go to the beach with us?" And she's like, "Oh, I don't really like water." I'm like, mm. I was really about to bring cool, that up. Really cool point. In the fact that she used to be a swimmer and hit her head, which is why she doesn't like water. Yeah. But also she, she nearly bad. drowned. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, the context. The, uh, yeah, the context there obviously being that cats don't like water. But yeah. I thought that that was a really interesting little thing. And I was like, I'm writing that down. 
Um, but uh, yeah. There is one last yeah. thing I do want to bring up, which is there's What's a up? point in the story where um, Tommy's going ham on a punching bag. He's like absolutely just beating it senseless and says, man, I really wish I could just get my hands on Lord Zed once. And then like two episodes later, he's in the same room as Lord Zed and gets his butt whooped. He gets whooped. He's enhancement talent on a WWE show. Like he is a jobber compared to Lord Zed. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, you, you mean so like you're not what we're wrong. watching with with those uh, the, the the dark tapings that we were seeing yeah. last week? <laughs> like he absolutely, and it's not until like he pulls out Saba and somehow does a thing and throws Saba at Zed, and somehow breaks Zed stuff and turns it back into a snake, which was a really nice little bit of continuity. And I'm just like, just make it back into your staff, my dude. Like, it's not broken forever. The snake is still alive. Grab some duct tape. No, because in the first episode, he just like magics a snake into his staff. Just yeah. Do that again and just proceed whooping on the white boy. Like, <laughs> there you go. Um, instead, no, it's like, I must run away at this point because reasons. It may be this because the snake was wounded at that point. He needed to heal it to make it go. No, you just put the snake down. You pick up Tommy. You go. That's a bad little Power Ranger. <laughs> just, just grab the by the collar of the shirt. Just grab him by like you do that thing where you like when you're fighting younger siblings and you hold them by the forehead and they're <laughs> swinging and they can't reach you. That's Tommy and Zed in a nutshell. Zed is yeah. so much stronger than Tommy. Just just pick him up and throw him in space. I haven't got me Andros three seasons early. <laughs> He's like, yeet! <laughs> He's going to wind up in a lost galaxy. Um, yeah, like... Just, far, far uh, away. Just, just like, yeet! And then at the beginning of the next season, the machine empire turn up. And they're like, right, did you lose something? And put him back down on her. <laughs> just... <laughs> Say, I like, yeah, Zed, Zed was really impressive in that fight. And, um, oh, yeah, by the way, I, it, there was a moment there that I really, really loved where, like, Tommy morphs. And he's like, he's like, do you really need to do all those ayahs? Let me do some. <laughs> <laughs> like, the dude's got jokes. He's got, he's got muscle. He can eat people. And he's got jokes. I mean, like, how do you? I mean, look, I mean, li let, living with Rito, you need a sense of humor. I mean, let's also be True. honest. This is this is the the three parter where Zed finally gets to go boss mode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you like, want to talk about how strong Zed looks? He literally looks strong because he whoops Tommy's butt. And I need to stop talking so loudly. Yeah. So, any other notes from the crew? It was nice to see Scott and Babu again, even if for a small time. Yeah, same with Finster. Finster, who mm. came up with the entire plan of finding the, the Zords. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with that, um, I, I think there's a consensus that everyone enjoyed this three-parter compared to other <clears throat> multi-parters or episodes that we've uh, yeah. endured. My, my AKA for this episode was a good three-parter that deserved to be a three-parter. <laughs> well because half the time we're talking about oh they dragged this whole thing out this this could have been one episode it didn't need, like half the time we complain that this doesn't need to be a three-parter and in this case aside from the rushed ending you have clear events <laughs> you have clear events that lead into the next bit like realistically though if they caught tommy's monologuing they could have added like a little bit more <laughs> across to yeah. make the ending a little bit better but it's still not bad for what we got. There is one thing we didn't discuss. It's very quick. I just want to highlight the fight with the Tengas, where Aisha makes about seven of them dance, and then goes, and now you fall down, and then they just do. <laughs> that was great. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can we also talk about what Adam does in that fight? When he gets real big. Yeah, 
and he just like he, he we'll fails to do like, a him. kip up. Yeah, and then like he gets really big, shakes around the tango like they're dice, and then yeets them like into the sun. And then one of them lands and starts flopping like a fish. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Carry on the outro and all that. Yeah. Yes. So with that, we actually enjoyed this one. Wonderful. Yay. Um, so with that, Sasha, we'll start with you. Where can we uh, find you on the socials? Oi. Um, social media um, that exists. Um, so the evil land of social media, I can be found on Tumblr, geekgirl101.tumblr.com. Uh, watch out for my comic book reviews. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at Geeky Kaplan. That is Kaplan with a K after the greatest superhero in the Marvel Universe, Billy Kaplan. All right. Where can they find you on the medias? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at One Drunk Geek. You can also find me over at castwavestudios.com doing a show with the same name. Uh, I'm also on TikTok, and I think I might actually be switching that back. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep Blue Ranger Blue Rye or go back to One Drunk Geek, but you can find me either or there. And uh, yeah, I'm all over the web. All right, hold on. Let me, let me, let me get ready for this. I, I got to help Ben. Say that like you don't do this every time we record. Oh, shut up. Let me have my fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at, at Bob T. Goldfish. Uh, you can find, you can also find me doing uh, the video game thing over at twitch.tv slash 321 underscore TV. And you can find me doing the sister show, The Voices from the Grid, Awesome Mania, over at txhdhockey.com slash x75 productions slash awesome mania there's been url changes still uh the point being uh, awesome mania is a wrestling podcast that mike and i do monthly where we sit down with one of our friends we watch through a pay-per-view and we talk all about it it's designed to be watched along with a pay-per-view and you can find this show on twitter at txhthockey.com slash vftg underscore pr and that's for the twitter that's why i at, said at twitter yeah. oh well i did the website and twitter is at vftg underscore pr that's why i added the underscore pr yeah. because i've said yeah. you can find this show on twitter at i'm used to the website first i'm sorry sir we already did the website my dude no we did that for awesome mania yeah, oh. and you made such a mess of it that I just decided to ignore it. Moving on! <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter at <laughs> Ethelin and Bob 75 Facebook at facebook.com slash x75productions, Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Michael x 75 and of course everything's at txhthockey.com. And so with that, Ben, take us away, good sir. We're finally after two and a half seasons over a hundred episodes of television found a three-parter that all four of us enjoyed and it's the one three-parter I had a bad voice for I should have been going ham during this I should have been yelling and screaming but I couldn't but we will leave you as we always do on these group episodes or any episode that I am involved in by saying guys, gals, and non-binary pals. In the words of the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, be excellent to each other. Party on, not get the specific honorifics. And until our next more phenomenal episode, be sure to grab your power coins and your power morphers. And may the power protect you. Did we mention that we actually like this three-parter? <laughs> <laughs>